So, hello and welcome. We are excited to have you here for our webinar about optimizing emails for dyslexic readers. Dyslexia is a language-based learning disability. It doesn't impact intelligence, but makes reading, writing, spelling, and sometimes speaking challenging. It affects about 10-20% of the population to some degree, making it one of the most common learning difficulties. Our goal is today to shed light on the challenges dyslexic readers face and discuss how we can make our digital communications more inclusive and accessible. I'm Alexandra, PR and Communications Lead at Stripe, and with me, Roman Burdiga, Product Designer at Stripe, Expert in UI and UX Design, and in Email Newsletter Scoring. Hi, Roman. Thanks, Alexandra. Hi, everyone. And we are really happy to welcome Daniel Britton today. Daniel is a brand communicator and graphic designer, specializing in brand identity, logo design, advertising, marketing, web design and animation. Hi, Daniel. Thank you for joining us today. Hi, everyone. Thank you so much for having me. Daniel was diagnosed with dyslexia himself at 18 after years of struggling at school with no help. Now he well known um, for creating dyslexic font that simulates the frustration and stress of reading with dyslexia. Daniel has done amazing work uh, with his unique fonts to help us to understand dyslexia better. He's gone from overcoming his own struggles in school to making a big difference around the world. Today, he will share how to make our designs more accessible and inclusive for everyone. So, Daniel, um, what were the biggest challenges you faced uh, in the school uh, due to the late recognition of dyslexia and how you overcome them? Um, well, biggest challenges. Well, uh, well, <laughs> it was, it, it's, it's hard to, um, it, it's very, very hard to uh, let you know just how difficult school was. It, there's, if you're not dyslexic, there's, there's it's almost nothing that I can I can do to to make you feel how bad I felt going through school. Um, you know, for argument's sake, if you if you take the typeface that I've done and you just try and read that even for a minute, you'll know how frustrating it is. I had that times all of the seven years of my primary school and then all of the seven years in secondary education. There's that 14 years of that level of frustration. And then you go to university and you do it all again then as well. It's, um, it, there wasn't, um, oh, sorry about that. My, um, <laughs> I mean, I'm in, I'm in demand today. Um, there we go. Um, no, so there's, there was nothing, um, there was no, no particular struggle. The entire thing was the struggle. That's, that's the difficult thing. Um, and there's no, there's no way of you getting out of that. It's from the moment you go to school, from the moment you finish your homework, that's the difficult section. Uh, and to overcome it, there wasn't. There was, it was, it was like, you know, like fighting the tide. It was, there was, there was no magic solutions back in the day. Um, yeah, it was extremely, extremely difficult. I understand. Um... Looking back, uh, what advice would you give the educators and institutions uh, to better identify and support students with dyslexia? Um, the, to be honest, the well, especially in the UK anyway, but the, the, the dyslexia uh, sort of uh, detection that we have over here with the, with with the uh, university student with the university tutors and the and, and, and the school uh, tutors they're really really good they can pick it up quite quickly these days because there's obvious telltale signs you know um the rate that somebody reads you know back you know think back into primary school when everybody had to read from the same book the the the, the teacher knows who is the quicker and who are the slower readers it's, it's obvious before it used to be a case of well, that child is stupid. And then that was it, was, you know, done. Now we know a bit more. We go, well, that child may have a learning difficulty. It might be dyslexia. And then if you pair the slow reading speed of, of, 
a child or a person or whatever, and you combine that with some really obvious trademark spelling mistakes, like D's and E's in wrong places, you know, it's 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 fairly obvious what what it is. Um, so people people can pick it up really really quickly these days, which is which is fantastic, and people can actually get the help they need to um, in order for them to get the right job that they want to have, as opposed to just having any old job, um, just to just to make ends meet. Okay, thank you. Um, what kind of help or maybe tools do you wish you had back when you were a student to make uh, learning easier? What tools uh, did I have? Would I want to have? I will. I think that the the, um, the YouTube has made such a tremendous difference to to learning uh, and podcasts oh. and. And all that sort of thing, you know, it's that sort of stuff wasn't available when I was at school because it hadn't yet been invented. But you know, I wish it was. Um, you know, they're, they're, they're such great results because the, the issue that you've got is is that people think, uh, and I understand the connection of this. So I don't hold anybody in ill will, but the, the issue that you've got is it's not that dyslexic people are stupid and they can't work things out. It's not that. It's simply for the fact that they struggle reading. So if you can change the source and you go from a text-based book to uh, a, an audio video on YouTube or a podcast, then you negate the problem completely. So, you know, we can do all that stuff now. So, yeah, that's, that, that's how it's done. Huh. I'm thinking now that we, could, we can make audio file uh, attach it to email for um describing what email is actually is <laughs> perfect, perfect. You know, there's a really good example of that actually the um of, of the newspapers the, the the best newspaper that i've seen that is sort of uh disability friendly or you know neurodiverse friendly or whatever whatever term you're using over in your country for for it is if you look at the economist as a newspaper, The Economist is, is an English newspaper we have. It's really, really, really good. And at the top, there's a little play button and then somebody will narrate the entire article for you. And you can just read along and see the pictures as and when you need it. So nobody's left out, which is, you know, it's a game changer, um, especially if you're, if you have dyslexia and you're in politics and you need to access that sort of information, you, you now can. So it's um it's it's not you know dyslexia is in all sections of society. It's not just like the arts or wherever you know the dyslexic people way way across in every sector. So having those sort of functionality um, points is, is is essential. Yeah, thank you, Roma. It's really great idea to implement the voice version for email. And uh, Daniel, how have your own experiences with dyslexia inspired you to raise awareness and create the dyslexia typeface? Um, well, it was it was you know it was, it was a simple university project actually, um, and it was you know it, it was simply there was to the the, the the project was 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 simply there to raise awareness for myself really <laughs> it was a, it was a it was a it was a self um explanation piece and um there was no there was no particular brief for the project it was just here was something that i wanted to produce to let people understand me better that's all it was uh and yeah so i i simply done the project to 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 be understood um i had no idea that it would have the impact that it did and uh, you know that's yeah it was it, if for those who haven't seen the typeface essentially what it is is it's a regular typeface that i've created but i've removed certain sections of each letter um so in order to slow down your reading yeah there we go so to slow down your reading pace so if you are non-dyslexic and you start reading with my typeface what it you what you'll do is you'll have a slower reading speed to and your and your reading speed will mimic the speed of a dyslexic person and in turn then what that will do is it will recreate 
the frustration and the embarrassment of reading everyday type. Uh, now, if you see here, you've got the A's, B's, and C's, and uh, D's. It's really obvious to see that each one of those letters are an A, a B, a C, and a D, and an E. But when you see them all together in conjunction in a paragraph, all of these broken letters together makes things very, very, very confusing. Uh, and, and that's when it has its impact, when you when you see the typeface en masse. I see. Thank you. And uh, what was the first reaction uh, when you created this project? Uh, yeah, the, I mean, the tutors liked it, um, but it was, you know, I, I created the project and they said, you know, very well done and <laughs> good for you. Uh, and then the project went up into the my mum's loft for a few years and it sat there. Uh, and then I, um, I I got my first job and, and then I decided I'd try and get it published and I published it years later, I think about a year and a half or two years later, and um, it just caught on it was insane you know the, the feedback i had was instantaneous i think I, I published it to this blog called design boom um and within sort of 18 hours i was being contacted by the daily mail and then after the daily mail published it it was it was global i was being contacted by every main news organization in every country across the world or within the space of two days it was um it, it was a, it was a lot of work <laughs> And do you see any big improvements in public awareness and understanding of dyslexia oh, yeah. since introducing this typeface? Yeah, massively, massively. Because what it does is that the typeface, um, so you can always tell somebody your problems, regardless of whatever the problems are. But the thing that you want to really try and do is to make the other person feel how you feel when you're in that problem. You, you want the, the empathy from the other person. Um, and that's what this typeface does. It, it, it recreates empathy. Um, you know, sympathizing with somebody is one thing, but you want the empathy from somebody. That's once somebody can empathize with your situation, then they can go, oh, okay, I get it now. Oh, right, okay, fine. Now I'll go, now I can help you out because I, I get the severity of it. And if you don't have that, if you don't, if, if somebody isn't feeling the weight of the problem, they're likely to not action it. But when they can feel it really, and it and it, make, and it makes them feel something, they go, okay, we need to do something about this because this is this is serious. And so that's what that's done. And interestingly enough, um, I was exhibiting this work over in Dubai uh, in 2017, and there's this really famous inventor really 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 famous inventor and he come past my stand and he looked at this typeface now bearing in mind this guy is is so wealthy you know travels the world does all this fantastic things and he saw that and he was like oh my god that that is it that that you know and, and the, the guy is like 55 years old and he said finally i can get my wife to understand <laughs> what it's like for me to go to work <laughs> Uh, but she didn't know. She didn't know. She was, for years she was, you know, like battering him about, about you know, this, the reading. Are you and joking? He, she she said, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so um, I, I, I honestly, I couldn't, I couldn't believe it because you wouldn't, you'd presume that somebody of that caliber wouldn't have the everyday problems that we do you know people not understanding him but yeah he did he 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 even he wasn't understood um so anyway we um yeah that was incredible absolutely incredible by the way his the wife is absolutely lovely as well and as our as as is the daughter we went out for some drinks afterwards and had a really good laugh about it so it was um yeah it was good it was really good yeah thank you thank you daniel <laughs> And another question uh, from me. Uh, you are a graphic designer, yeah? yeah. Um, so how um, do you explain the value of uh, accessible design to clients uh, who might not know much about it? Um, and uh, could you tell us um, about times when making your designs more accessible really helped your clients? Um well accessibility is 
it's it's a, it's a really 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 big thing. It's interesting though that um, so so in our industry that we're in, accessibility for information is it's obvious. Like it, it it's not a question really. It's you know it's regard. I mean, it, it, regardless of who you're speaking to, the, the everybody within our industry wants their information to be accessible to absolutely everybody. So within what we do, we we sell my a lot of the work that I do is selling or marketing or branding property. Now, if you've got, uh, you know, a portfolio of, you know, X amount of 100 million or whatever the whatever the thing is, you want absolutely everybody on the market to be able to read your information of what you're selling as quickly as possible for them to make the decision of whether they want to buy it or invest in it or not. So really accessibility in, for our industry isn't really a question, it's a must. It's, it's an absolute must because we sell also to uh, overseas um, where English might be the, the second language. So you also have to not only you know design it and make sure it looks nice, but you have to make sure that the language that is used is palatable on a professional level, but also the fact that you know, you're not so verbose with your words and you're, and you know, you're misunderstood. You have to, there's a very fine line in communication, um, with that sort of thing. Um, yeah. So yeah, that's, that's that it's, you know, it's, it's, you know, accessibility is, is, um, it's, it's an absolute must. And, and, and funny enough that the, the best way to make something accessible is to say less always in emails, in brochures, in websites, regardless of your competency and how good you are at reading everybody wants to spend less time at the computer everybody wants to spend less time working things out you, you the, the doing is is the bit that pays the bills right it's so you see if you're so if you can get your whatever information you have refine it and then refine it again so it's absolutely it's it to its, its essential point then go to print with it that's that's the key point to um accessibility and if you bear that in mind, that will all work, that that will then that principle of, of less then plays into the hands of dyslexic readers very 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 well um, because you're you're literally spending less time reading. So it's it's perfect. Thank you. So um, if we need still uh, send emails, yeah. So uh, how should we optimize emails for dyslexic readers? Oh, sorry, I've answered this question now. Sorry. <laughs> no, no, no. It, it's, it's next, next question for this topic. Uh, yeah. Because uh, we still need to use text in the digital world, you know? Yeah. So, uh, we need to um, uh, made, make this text more readable. For that, we need to make something, yeah? It's like... Yeah. A, uh, what sizes of fonts we need to use, styles, typefaces are best for marketing uh, email content, legible for for um, for readers with dyslexia. And maybe you have uh, some tips uh, for changing texts uh, for better uh, understanding it. Yeah, so the, the absolute... The absolute best way of, of 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 designing for somebody with dyslexia would, would simply be to say less in in text form. That is the absolute best way. But also, you know, I, I work all the time with people who don't have dyslexia, and even if they are faced with a lot of text, they get bored and they shut off very 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 quickly. You know, especially in the social media sort of world, like the attention span of people is gone like this and this and this and this and this. So your communication needs to be refined so, so, so much. That, and then that's the key. Never, you know, when you're writing something, don't waffle. Don't put in words there, especially in marketing. Um, in, if you're writing a novel, fine. <laughs> Take all the time in the world. Use all 500 pages. Write your Harry Potter books, you know, one to nine, no problem at all. But if you're writing for an email, it, you know, it's like that. If you're doing it for a billboard, you know, even shorter, you know, because you only see it for a short amount of time. You know, it, it's really interesting because we, so we, in in, prop, in UK property, I don't know what it's property markets like for, for you guys in your country, but 
so much of the property sector in the UK is done through emails, which broadly speaking, you know, it's, you know, people think it was done through websites or wherever. No, it's not. Like the emailer is one of the, the absolute cornerstones of selling millions and millions and millions of pounds. So it's, you've got to, you know, it's, it's, it's essential that you get that right and, and to make sure that you, whatever you do, it's to the point and it's interesting. But that also, you know, that's the other point, making it graphically interesting, but the text, making it refined, um, and then you'll be, you know, perfect. Also having, um, having um, on, on, a, on a typographic point, if you're gonna create something for a dyslexic person to read it and you wanna make it easier, you can increase the size of the text, fine. Every, every, you know, everybody knows that. But if you increase the size of the leading, so that so the so that the leading is 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 the space in between each line of text. So yeah, that's right. Yeah. So the so the top line and the second and the third and the fourth line should be a bit more distance away from each other. And if you expand the kerning, so you just slightly just make the letters a little bit less close, it it allows each letter to breathe a bit easier and making it a little bit more readable. Whereas if you condense everything and everything is just a constant, like a block of, you know, overwhelming text, then yeah, it can be a bit uh, intimidating or can be a bit confusing for, for dyslexic readers. So yeah, good design actually is, is the way to, to, to combat dyslexia. Thank you, Daniel. And uh, what would you say about the Open Dyslexic Font? Is it helpful or not? Absolutely, I think it's great. Uh, you know, I've, I've I've seen this typeface years ago when it was first created, and it's it's fantastic. It's really, really, really good work. Um, yeah, definitely. Um, you know, the the other the other great um, typeface for this as well is Comic Sans. Believe it or not, I, I know that Comic Sans gets a lot of uh, you know stick between designers, but it's a very, very, very great typeface. It's not intimidating. It's very, very, very informal, much like your open dyslexic font here. Um, and it, 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 it's much, uh, as, a, as a look and feel for a typeface, it, it, it's just friendly and inviting, and it does help. Um, not all dyslexic people will need to have like an open dyslexic typeface. They, they probably get get on completely fine with Vedana or Gil Sands or Helvetica, that they're probably enough as well. But it, it really, it really depends on the person because dyslexia as a as a condition isn't binary. It's not like you have it or you don't. It's more of a gradation. So it's where do you fit on that grade? Is it lighter dyslexia, almost not having dyslexia, or is it very, very heavy? So, depending on where you fit on the on the scale, is is really what you'd need. I see. Thank you so much. And um, oh, sorry, I, I have to say uh, another thing. I understand when I prepare into webinar and found the uh, open dyslexic font. Uh, I understand that um, in emails we can uh, actually uh, use some of our um, gamification hack yeah uh, in emails that allow you allow us uh, to um, uh, turn on another typeface inside the email after user receive it it's it can be like a checkbox you know if you are dyslexic check it and uh, he he will check it and uh, all the text inside the email will be uh, re rendered with the uh, for example, open dyslexic font or maybe Comic Sans. Unfortunately, uh, it's not uh, supported for all uh, email clients or maybe even browsers. But if the part of the uh, receiver receivers uh, uh, may chance to make it, yeah, it will be great. I think that that's genius. Yeah, absolutely right. Yeah, if you can do something like that superb definitely i think we can we can test it and um, maybe write some article about it for sure roman we definitely have more work to do <laughs> after this webinar. <laughs>
And the last question from me, Daniel, uh, what advice would you give to people who are facing challenges because of dyslexia? Uh, oof. Um, well, just know that, you know, 10 to 20 percent of the global population has dyslexia. So you're definitely not alone in that. Um, and I would always uh, I would always say to somebody, you know, like, what do you want? You know, because if you're for argument's sake, if you're struggling um, at school, oh, sorry, you've gone then. Are you there? Are you guys there? Oh, there you go. Sorry, you disappeared from the screen. Sorry about that. Um, I would say that, yeah, it's really what do you want from life, I guess, because, yeah, how, how badly do you want it? Do you, you know, is, is a university education essential? Do you, do you need to be, put yourself in a position where you're going to struggle so much? Um, or is something like picking up a trade more important? Would cooking be better for a living? would you know uh, would gardening be better there is you know there are so many other things you can you know if you if, if you decide that and, and you're telling me that the the only thing you ever want to do is to be a writer or to be um uh, a politician or a graphic designer that, that deals with text all day long and that's the only thing you want to do then you've really got to prove to yourself that that is it and you've got to put yourself through all of that heartache and the struggle and you've got to go through it uh, and you know and you've got to do it on your own because really there's nobody else that can help you do it there's no one no one's around you know mum isn't there anymore you know you've got to be able to take take the blows you know it's those long long nights that you're going to spend on the computer questioning yourself you've got to go through all of that on your own and if you can honestly do that and and you think that the the reward is worth all that hardship then you should do it but if you're only going to do it because you've been told to go to university because it's a good thing to do by your parents, question that. Maybe, you know, be a cook. Marco Pierre White uh, and Jamie Oliver are, are two of the best chefs in the world. And they're both heavily dyslexic. You know, they, they found their own thing to do outside of, of reading and writing. It's not essential. You know, or you might find that you discover that you've got an absolute passion for cars to go and be a mechanic you know, do something with your hands you know dyslexic people are amazing with their hands they're very 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 creative people they dyslexic people problem solve in ways that other people can't do and there's a there's a bonus to being dyslexic and that often isn't talked about people uh, people with dyslexia their their problem solving skills are often second to none which is and, and they work problems out very 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 quickly the problem is they're often put in situations where that isn't a requirement of their job. So it's wasted. So yeah, there's many, many, many things you can do. So just question yourself, what do you want? Is it worth the hardship? And if it is, you've got to go for it and just don't take no for an answer. Just keep pushing and pushing and pushing. The late nights will pay off, definitely. Daniel, uh, I guess you just motivated not only uh, dyslexic people, but non-dyslexic <laughs> 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 thank you for that speech <laughs> and thank you for your story and uh, your insights are really amazing and actually we have a question uh, we have questions so uh the first one how about implementing voice readers on the blog pages are they helpful for people with dyslexia as, uh, as they're your... amazing. yeah amazing. yeah uh okay so the next one i'm interested what common misconceptions about dyslexia do you encounter and how do you address them um well in the uk dyslexia is very 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 well understood these days it's not like it was when i was growing up so i have to say that there has never been a better time to be a dyslexic person than today it's really really good the understandings there the, the facilities are there to help you out with whatever you need. It's, it, you know, there's an absolute library of, of things online that you can, you know, dip into. It's, it's, it's really, really good. But I have to say in other countries, so the UK is very, very, very multicultural and we accept an, an enormous amount of immigrants all the time. So, but the, the, the thing with that is that we um, encounter people from other cultures and, and nations where the understanding of dyslexia is is like zero, like absolutely zero. 
Uh, and there was one, there was one woman that I was speaking to years and years ago, and she refused to believe her son had dyslexia uh, because she thought that it was a bad representation of the family's bloodline. So she refused to let the child have any additional help because she thought it made the child look weak. So what she done was she sent the child through all of her, all, all of his education, failed absolutely everything religiously. Uh, and I, I haven't spoke to them for, for, for years and years and years, but you you know what's happened to that child. You, you know, it's, you know, the, 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 the it's, 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 the, the, the problem that you've got with dyslexia, if you if you don't catch it, is that if you haven't found your thing to do at school or university, then and your teachers aren't really there giving you the support, or your parents aren't giving you the support, well, what do you do? You create mischief in the classroom because you can't focus. So then, what happens is you then create mischief, and then you get sent to the back of the classroom. Um, with all of the other people who are creating mischief that can't follow in the class. Those people that sit at the back of the, of the class then become the naughty gang. The naughty gang then form a friendship. That friendship then goes outside of the school. And as they grow older, the crimes they commit become larger and larger and larger and larger. And then eventually you'll find that they will end up in prison. 40, 40 to 60 percent regarding depending on what 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 prison that is you're going to but 40 to 60 percent of uk prisons are people with learning difficulties so you think about that as a statistic it's massive so anyway yes so yeah it's 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 not that you're thick if you have dyslexia it's 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 the, the you know it, it's it's in a, it's in a something that needs to be addressed um yeah it's, it's, and it's, it's, it's a problem for everybody because it's your tax dollars or pounds or euros or whatever it is that, that, that will be going to these people, but it'll be funding them pe these people in prison. You know, it's something that needs to be helped out. Thank you so much for such answer. How long did it take to develop your dyslexia fund? Um, not long, not, not long. Um, no, <laughs> I am. Um, I, 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 I... <laughs> Uh, you know, it's, it's really interesting that, you know, if you create something that's really, really, I, I know this is going to sound self-aggrandizing, and it is, but please bear with it. Um, if, sometimes if you create something that's really, like, good, people think, oh, my God, it must have it must have been a masterpiece. It must have taken years. Not true. Like, it can just happen, and it can, you publish it online, and you think it looks okay, but other people think it looks great, and then that's where the value in it comes from. But, you know, the, the time that it's spent in taking you to do that thing that has no reflection on the outcome. Um, interesting that. <laughs> Thank you. And the last question, really interesting. How do you balance aesthetic appeal with functionality when creating accessible designs? How do you balance aesthetic appeal? Um, interesting. That's really interesting. Really, really interesting. Um, <laughs> Yeah, well, <laughs> um, well, for me, it's really easy as a, as a designer because everything I do is designed with an aesthetic. I, I, absolutely. If I'm sending a client an invoice, the invoice will be designed like perfectly. <laughs> it looks, the invoice even looks inviting. I mean, you, you want to pay me. Do you know what I mean? It's, it looks good. <laughs> so, every, <laughs> so everything I do is designed and looks nice. Um, but the um but the other the other factor that i always do by default is to do less less text get right to the point of something you know question qu question why somebody's wrote the, the, the text you know that is that necessary does that need to be put in could you have said that in one line rather than three do, do you know what i mean like there's don't make it sound like it's um elementary there's there's a there's a, there's a tightrope between uh elementary writing to the point where you think, well, you haven't tried, but there's also the other end of that scale where you're coming across as verbose and you're using this, you know, really superfluous words and you're sort of self-aggrandizing yourself for your own grammar. That is, you know, the, the, the two problems on both ends of the scale. You want to find something nice in the middle, use the nice grammar, but say it in a way that's quick and effective. So yeah, it's just refine what you're saying, make it look nice, job done. Thank you so much.
much. Uh, uh, that's all. I see that's the end. So thank you so much, Daniel. Uh, oh, sorry, we have one more question. Um, are the emails created in Stripe accessible? But I guess this question for Roman. <laughs> Roman. Yeah. Um, actually, yeah. Um, we, as a standard in the, in, in the in industry, email creation, we has done everything to ensure that the, our emails are highly accessible. Um, and uh, actually, we follow and participate in the email markup, markup consortium community to stay updated on the latest news and know everything about it. Um, by the way, uh, check our uh, previous webinar with uh, Mark Robbins uh, that we talk a lot about this. Yeah. I think we attached the link. Yeah. Yeah. We have this link. Okay. So uh, thank you so much, Daniel, for sharing your amazing story and tips for a more accessible online world. It's evident how it's vital today um, accessibility is and underscoring the social responsibility every business carries. So your contribution reminds us of the profound impact we can have in marketing the digital, making the digital realm inclusive for everyone. So thank you for lighting the way. And uh, a big thanks to everyone here today. Please look out for a follow-up email with a recording of today's session, key takeaways, and additional resources. Thank you again for attending, and we look forward to welcoming you to future webinars. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye-bye.